Right, well it's about um, one o'clock in the morning and um, you know how I get a little bit funny about getting things to light up. When we got this, um, um, it had developed a dry joint um, in the rear, in this rear section here, which we're able to get going up pretty fast. I was um, um, having a chat to Travis and saying it will be an easy one to get it up and running because I know he had up and, and, and displaying before. So we're getting, the VFO function is actually working quite well. I'm not out in the workshop, I am um, in the kitchen. <laughs> it hasn't moved from the kitchen. Uh, so I need to get it out to the workshop, inject some signals in. But what have we got? Audio stage, working beautifully. Now hear that cycling? I can hear it cycling. And we'll have to have a look at that. When I band change, that cycling's still there. So I can just hear that sort of below. Now, what we'll be able to do is find out whether or not we're actually got all oscillators working once we get it out in the workshop. But the um, digital component of it is actually looking quite good. Um, and for this age of radio, it's quite amazing. Um, obviously, we're looking at... Um, at the moment, seven megs. So, um, seven. Uh, oh, hang on, eight three. So I'm right up the top. Sorry. Um, so let's come down. <laughs> Bit of a heterodyne there, but um, I'm sort of curious to bring, spin that down into where we. Yeah, you can see. Yeah, you can feel it actually. So 7.12, just trying to think now. So that's got to be seven, right, start from there. Seven O, coming back to so seven megs right there. Oh, I know, I know they moved the decimal place, of course. Watch this. Well, that was really good, wasn't it? Six O one. okay, so basically, that's kilohertz and that's 0.1 kilohertz, which makes sense. And that's display off. Now I can hear it's cycling again. So once again, I you know, my, my thoughts are it's probably not locking completely at the moment. <laughs> Although this is not really a PLL system, it's a crystal based um, oscillator system. So something's free running in there and you've got to sort of start thinking a little bit more old age. Um, hmm. Doing it on seven megs, but three megs sounds, one meg sounds fine. Actually, we need to get this on a um, analyzer very fast because I think we're gonna find there's a seven meg oscillator problem. Yeah, see that's not, as you can hear from that, I don't know if you can hear that, that noise tells me that it's it's just got a an issue on seven megs. But I'll tell you what, that, well there, sorry, there's your, there's your receive tune there. That's actually peaking up. Okay, so that's good. That's actually showing some really good signs. So let's try something really stupid while we're here with just a dummy load. Let's put it into transmit mode and see if we get any peak. Nothing there, nothing there. Uh, we might need to be in tune mode though, sorry. That might work better. Let's have a look here, try that again. See if we can get anything. Now I'd say, say we're gonna have to suss out just exactly, let's put that fan on too, what the heck. Uh, there is a heater switch over here as well. High. So it's, I would have thought high, high filament. I need to whip this over the other way to be honest. So just giving you a bit of a look here. This is obviously their set of crystals uh, for each band. And it look, it's pretty crude. And, and when I say crude, let me get out of the light a bit here, sorry. Crude because it's 1969. Um, for 1969 advanced. Now this is their um, driver setup. This is the thing that people found hard to believe because you know when you're taking a transistor based driver section and you're going into a valve 
you've got to get the impedances right. So this is what um, you're seeing uh, in th these areas here and here. And we'll have to um, have a real good look at that. But the good thing is that before I get to the valve stage, I can sniff out RF all in this area. So all in here and here, I can sit there and make sure for, at you know, a 12 volt level uh, that um, it's, it's got uh, some sort of RF being sniffed off it. And actually, just to prove that, now I reckon it was, oh, hang on, wrong, wrong probe, I'll be right. Grab me positive probe works better. Uh, I reckon we found, I'll just go over to DC, I think we found about uh, 12 volts coming off around right there. And look at that. Okay, so there's our 12 volts that we need to basically power the uh, driver stage, etc. But not to be confused with the high volts that we need for the other side. So let me just flip this over. Now, this is a kitchen test, so please don't expect too much. Um, I'm going to um, flip it over and just have a quick look. Uh, what I'm looking for is some HV in the uh, output stage. Hang on. Okay, a little trick for new players. Um, when you're freighting um, stuff from point A to point B, and this is, by the way, not a... Um, hang on, let me just turn this volume down a bit. This is not an issue with the people that freighted it, because if you saw how much bubble wrap was around this radio, Travis went crazy getting... But let me show you what can happen just through Australia Post being dickheads. Now, watch here. See the spark? Well, that's a dry joint. Working, not working. Initially, we checked voltages here, 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 and thought, hey, they look pretty good, even though we haven't got a circuit for this yet. And then I just found this little spot here where I thought, look at that. Bang, off. No lights. Nothing at all. And we'll just be resoldering that back onto that there. And look at that. Lights action. Now, this is, you know, these sort of things happen in transit all the time, especially on older radios. So when you're, you know, grabbing a FTDX 400, FT200 or anything, and you um, freight it from one end of the country to the other, um, just expect that, you know, don't blame the seller. <laughs> Often the seller has, you know, he's seen it like this, and he's been saying, hey, when I saw it, it was working. And he's right, it was bloody working. And this is probably the perfect example of how something goes wrong. So. The transmit test that I wanted to do with you uh, on this video, um, we will actually um, won't get into the PA stage. I have a bit of a rule um, that when we find something like this, obviously this section here, um, if I have a well, let's have a quick little look. Um, okay, so it's a 12 volt feed coming through there. So we know it's not a high voltage feed, um, but what we don't know is we don't know enough about what the other feeds are. And we need to draw a little mud map before we go um, crazy into the output stage. So we're going to call this stage one of the um, ACI-TRON SSB400. Because really, for you know, 1.30 in the morning for a quick look, we've learned a lot already. We've learned that um, we can make the thing power up. And um, I believe receive. I really do. I, you know, look, I'm, I've got no antenna hooked up, but... Um, Sitting here uh, on um, 3 megs, 3.4 megs, um, quite seriously, I would say, let's have a look here. So that's 3.5, uh, sorry, 3.454. Okay, yeah, yeah, I see how they're doing it. Makes a lot of sense now. Okay, um, but the fact that with my receiver tuning control, I can find a null where it's dead, dead, and a peak. And I can hear it, see how it just goes down, comes up, and you can see how it's just doing exactly what it should do. Now, I believe on an antenna, um, which, let, let's try something stupid. Hang on, I'll put you on pause. I'm going to put a multi, I'm going to take it off um, dummy load, put it on a multimeter lead that's going to connect to my window here. And let's see if we can hear anything. You never know. Right, so with the turn this noise down, what we've done is we've made a really huge antenna in the kitchen here, which is my multimeter lead that connects to my multimeter lead that connects to my window. So we have some noise. I doubt we'll have some signals, but um, let's just see what we've got. 
probably a lot of hash. Uh, we're picking up a bit of rubbish. And we're change and the thing is it's changing its area. Look at that. It's picking up rubbish unfortunately, but once again that RF tune, I need my signal generator to really get into this and have a look at what it's really doing. But I'm very <coughs> excuse me, very, very hopeful. Just coming up the band a bit actually. I'll tell you what, you can do some spinning with this thing. Let's have a look at where we are. Right, uh, sorry, that's at 0.1 kilohertz. We want to have a look at this here. So this is, um, right, let's get this right. This is uh, 3.451. So we want to come up, 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 up. Let's bring ourselves up to where the band should. 3.5, 60, uh, let's keep going about 5, 600. Right, see if we can pick the tune on 600. And remembering we're on a multimeter lead with that stupid dud joint there. I am really, really positive when we put this on an antenna, we are going to hear things. It is very positive. We're just hearing rubbish off my multimeter lead at the moment, but I've got to tell you, let's come back down to about 3.6 somewhere. Have a look at that receive pick up, which is exactly what we want it to do. And we can peak it. Unfortunately, on my multimeter lead, we're not going to receive much, but let me turn that down a bit. Okay, so this has been a nice little test on a multimeter lead. <laughs> But we'll go in and we'll fix this little fella here, and that's um, that join that we talked about. And um, we'll come back on a um, the next session of the um, ACITRON SSB 400. And believe me, you've sort of been seeing it as I've been seeing it, from basically no power to intermittent power to finding out why. And that's the thing you've got to be thinking about when you're looking at a radio. Why? Troubleshooting. Start with the basics. Voltage. Where's it going? What's it got? What's it need? Um, you know, we got we got very lucky here on this one. Um, this this little joint problem. It's going to use my multimeter lead, but um, this little joint problem here. You are not going to get easy ones like this every day. See how that's just so easy? Bang. They don't normally come that easy. Um, that one just sort of stood out a bit. So uh, we got lucky. But I, yeah, next video you see of the uh, ACITRON SSB 400, I think I can guarantee you, you're going to be listening to, uh, listening to a signal on SSB. And uh, if it wasn't, um, uh, what's it say? For my little Alexa screen. Alexa, what time is it? It's 1.31 a.m. Oh, well, that sort of computes with what you've got on screen. Fair enough. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so at 1.31am, let's call this um, quits for this uh, particular unit, um, but I'm hoping that we've got, uh, when we go to check HV voltages, we've got them there, because if we've got them there, um, we can trace them through, and as I said, we're going to draw pretty much a bit of a circuit, I haven't got a circuit for this thing, if anybody's got a circuit for an ACI-tron um, uh, SSB400, uh, it'll make my life a lot easier. But I can tell you, um, we'll be drawing one up, and, and that's going to be the trick, is to pretty much from here, start tracing and drawing, and uh, don't get me wrong, I'm not going to draw up the oscillators and the, you know, <laughs> all the switching and through to the uh, LED, uh, well, sorry, uh, yeah, it is LED, sorry, um, uh, stage, uh, that's going to be just a, a nightmare. But we do want to draw up the HV stage, because um, we want to get a bit of an idea uh, what goes where. And, uh, and try and find out what's happening. Okay, thanks very much. Um, I'm glad you got to see this with me and a little bit of you know basic fault finding uh, on some very simple stuff, but the next video I think will show you a far few, well, a few more things that are far more complex. 73s from VK3 Charlie Mike. This is an ACI Tron SSB 400. From what we can decide, I think we decided it was around 1969 to 1970 vintage, 73s.